Back to Hello Nigeria. Thank you for staying with us. We have a very important conversation to get into with regards to hepatitis. And we're joined in the studio by Agemba Chinonso, also known as a Proco Doctor. And he's going to be telling us all about hepatitis awareness today. As Olive said before the break, it's actually a bit more deadly than HIV and AIDS. And we need to find out more information so that we can ensure that we are safe at all times. Thank you so much for being here today. Thank you very much for joining us. I think I find your name very interesting, a yeah. Doctor. Why did you choose that brand name? Because I know Apoko in Nigeria parlance means gossip. Yes, um, Apoko basically means gossip, just like you said. Um, but I just realized that a lot of Nigerians do not really know much about their health care. There seems to be this divide between the doctor and the patient when it has to do with health care. We, we don't pay attention to it, and uh, it's the doctor's business. but. Coming, but having practiced for quite a while, I've come to realize that the patient knowing about his or her health tends to lead to better outcomes in the general health of the population. But then, um, having to sit down and talk to someone about their health, especially when it's not interesting, people don't tend to sit down and watch health shows. And so I had to devise a more interesting way to pass across the message, hence the Apoko doctor. doctor. Nice, nice. And that's worked for you. I mean, you've managed to build a brand around that. And today we're looking into hepatitis. A lot of people watching right now are probably wondering, hmm, what exactly is hepatitis? So let's start off with that. Okay, so um, hepatitis basically comes from two Greek words. Hepa, meaning um, the liver in Greek, and titis, meaning inflammation. And so when we say hepatitis, we basically are talking about the inflammation of the liver. And um, there are many things that could lead to this inflammation of the liver. For example, viral hepatitis, which are caused by viruses, which is the hepatitis virus that many of us know about. And then there are drugs, too, that could lead to hepatitis. For example, the simple ibuprofen could lead to Hepatitis. What? How? Wait. How? 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 Wait. How? How? Please, Zul. Please, I didn't come to work today to get scared. So, how? lots of people take ibuprofen as painkillers. Yes, but uh, it can. It can lead to hepatitis. Un under what circumstances can that happen? It's, um, the word is, it happens very rarely. But the fact is, it can. Mm. Lead to hepatitis. Wow. So I think this is more important. It's more important now more than ever that we talk about the fact that you should say no to over the counter medication. So if you need to see a doctor, if you feel pain, see the doctor, let the doctor prescribe the medication. And the fact that the doctor has prescribed it to you before when you felt the same pain doesn't mean you should, you know, just say, oh, last time I had a headache, doctor gave me this, so I should go and have this again. You wow. know, we keep preaching this on the show. And I think it's more important now because. Usually, people will just think, well, I have pain. I take this medicine, I take this yeah, one. Yeah. So now let's talk about the various types of hepatitis. Okay. And, okay, let's talk about the various types first. Okay, um, the, um, the various types of flavors, like I like to call them, um, are five main. The hepatitis A, the hepatitis B, the hepatitis C, hepatitis D, and hepatitis E. A to E. And they differ in various ways. For example... Hepatitis A and E are just acute viruses. In other words, they would infect a person, but not for as long as six months. And um, those don't really lead to the more sinister complications of hepatitis. And then there's B. Um, B is the one most people are scared of. It's... It's carried by the blood, carried by body fluids, vaginal secretions, um, semen, name it. And this can lead to the chronic hepatitis. And then there's C. C is the, uh, almost the same thing as B. It's chronic at the same time and could lead to the complications of hepatitis. And then there's D. But the, the queer thing about D is that D cannot multiply if there's no B. So if, if, if a person is not infected with B or has never been infected with B, the chances are the person may never get D infection. Oh, so wow. B can progress to D eventually? No. B and D are different. Okay. But D 
needs B to replicate. So which is the most deadly of A to E? B. Which is, and the most common? The most common, A, B, and C. Yeah, I was actually going to say, because I admit that the only three types of hepatitis that I had personally heard of was A, B, and C, yeah. clearly because they're the most prevalent <laughs> ones. But how prevalent is hepatitis in Nigeria today? I would say um, that about 20 million people in Nigeria are suffering from hepatitis. Wow. And our population is 198 million. So that is basically 20% of our population. Yeah. Suffering from hepatitis. Oof. Okay. Now, is there a cure for hepatitis or can it be managed? Hepatitis can be managed. Um, I'll jump straight to B. Um, when people are infected with B, the hepatitis B virus, for some people, their body tends to clear it. But those that are not fortunate enough to clear it out of their system end up developing a chronic type. And it's the chronic type that leads to the, 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 the chronic type when it's not managed now leads to the liver cancer, cirrhosis of the liver, and liver complications, basically. But we need to know how to manage effectively the acute kind and how to prevent it because this is one of the diseases where you don't want to get it you want to prevent it rather than getting it and can it be prevented yes um currently the the groups of or rather the types of hepatitis that can be prevented are a b and d by virtue of b um, and they're prevented with vaccines. Um, so the A vaccine is given in like two doses, six months apart. And then the B vaccine is given in three doses, one month apart. Or rather, the first two doses have to be given one month apart. And then the next, which is the third dose, can be given about one to six months apart. Okay. Now let's talk about lifestyle complications or lifestyle um, changes that can affect or predispose one to hepatitis. Okay, for hepatitis A and E, you basically get them from contaminated food and water. So, so I go to eat in fast food. Hmm. I could be at risk of contracting hepatitis. Yes. Okay. Um, contaminated food and water in the sense that it is transmitted through the fecal oral roots. Fecal meaning feces and um, oral meaning your mouth. And um, if the person who is serving your food is infected with hepatitis A. And the, the strange thing, or not, not really the strange thing, the interesting thing about hepatitis A, B, and C is that most of this hepatitis virus are more communicable, they're more transferred before the person starts showing signs of the illnesses. So if a person is infected with hepatitis A and handles your food, and doesn't wash his hand correctly or fruits are not properly, um, properly washed, the chances are that if you ingest those contaminated food, you will get hepatitis A. Okay. Now, B is gotten from blood, sharing shafts, um, sex. But at the same time, even pedicure, manicure, because if someone is caught and there's blood on the sharp instruments or people share sharps at home or whatever, the chances are that it can be transferred over to the next person. The same thing with C, the same thing with D, and food again with E. Wow. So we need to stay away from, we need to be careful and mindful of where we eat, what we drink, basically whatever we ingest sexual um, habits, yeah. as well as um, basically sharing objects. Sharing shop, shop objects. objects, yeah. Interesting. Okay. Very interesting. So what's the way forward? Is there, can people, how do you prevent yourself in the first place aside from that? Can you get vaccinated against hepatitis? Yes, you can get vaccinated against hepatitis A, hepatitis B. Currently, there is no vaccine for hepatitis C. And that's when you get through blood and okay. sex and but um currently they're working on it and so <laughs> we hope it comes out in 
as soon as possible. <laughs> wow. But currently, we can be vaccinated against hepatitis A, hepatitis B, and there are no vaccines against E and so basically, you can vaccinate yourself against hepatitis that you can contract from whatever you ingest. Yes. However, you need to still be careful of your sexual habits and sharing of sharp objects. Yes, you can also be vaccinated against B. Okay. okay you can also great. be vaccinated B. We don't have vaccines for C and E. And how often are you meant to get vaccinated? Is it a one-time thing or do you have to go back every five years? <laughs> <laughs> uh, the beautiful thing about the hepatitis B vaccination is it can last, theoretically, for as long as 25 years sometimes for life, because it mimics the body system to, okay, you are actually given a weakened form of the virus, a weakened or dead form of the virus, and it is injected into your system, and then your body mounts a response against it. Now, what, a beautiful thing about the human body is it has memory especially when it has to do with infections and diseases. And it creates this immunoglobulin, IgG, which is a secondary kind of immunoglobulin, that protects the body against further getting this infection. So as long as the IgG is in your system, which is why somebody who has had hepatitis B infection before and is able to clear it out of his system, cannot be infected again. Mm. So it's just like with chicken pox and some yeah, other exactly, things, they've yes. built an immunity against I got chicken pox twice. You know, you know those weird people that catch it twice? Yeah, I, I was hear one that of there's them. a one in 1,000 chance of catching chicken pox twice. So I'm one in and a thousand. Shingles a one in a million. I, I'll just, I'll just far Actually reach and stretch. Yeah, I'm telling you. <laughs> I, I think this is a very important conversation. We're wrapping up real quick, but if you have any questions, comments, contributions in this regard, the numbers to call are on your TV screen. It can be a part of this conversation. Let's talk about how hepatitis changes one's life. Now, we find that we have a lot more awareness with regards to HIV and AIDS. And we're being told that if you have HIV, it's not the end of the world. Once you discover on time, you can start to take your antiretroviral medication to reduce your CD count. And then you can get married and have a happy life. How does hepatitis change one's life practically? Okay. Um, practically... Hepatitis, I'll, I'll, I'll use a big word here. Hepatitis are hepatotropic viruses. In other words, they love the liver. <laughs> and that is the only place they can replicate, unlike HIV that spreads everywhere. And so when a person is newly infected with hepatitis, it goes straight to the liver because that seems to be the major place it divides. And then when it divides, the body mounts a response because hepatitis in itself is not harmful to the liver but the symptoms and the illnesses are caused by the body's response to the virus mm. because when it gets into the liver it changes the the liver cells architecture and so this liver cell begins to express certain proteins that were not there in the first place and then the body sees it as a foreign object and oh let's get it and the body ends up destroying much of its own liver cells which now leads to the symptoms of hepatitis in general and the liver is a very important organ the liver is involved in digestion of fats digestion of proteins um, um, cre uh, creation of proteins too and when these things are affected there, there's toxin buildup basically there's an inability to process proteins there's an inability to process fats and so and if it progresses to the chronic type especially in B, C and D the chances are that the person will develop liver cancer which in most cases ends up ultimately killing the person Wow. So now let's talk about some of the symptoms to look out for. At what point should you be alarmed? Um, okay, I, I talked about earlier um, about people who begin to infect others long before they start to show signs of this disease. And you can divide it into three phases. The first phase is the prodromal phase. It's the phase before it gets to the liver. 
And the symptoms are non-specific. For most people, they will think at that point that they have malaria, but they don't. They're fatigued, you have a um, low-grade fever, you have some abdominal pain, and you know, just muscle weakness, muscle pain, and it's non-specific. We, we call it the flu-like illnesses, and the major thing on this person's mind is, oh, I think I have malaria. I don't feel so well. But that is the period where it's getting to the liver. And then when it gets to the liver and begins to destroy, or rather when the body begins to destroy the liver cells, you now begin to have a dark colored urine. Because the bilirubin in the body has now begun to leak into the urine. And when it leaks into the urine, it changes the color of the urine, makes it darker. And for some, it leaks, the unconjugated type leaks into the body system, and then you have yellow discoloration of the skin, and then yellow discoloration of the eyes. And then at that point, people can say, oh, your eyes are yellow, I think you have hepatitis. But the person has had it long before that point. So these are some of the symptoms that some people may show up. And then when it progresses long before, long after then, you now begin to have abdominal swelling, for some people, okay, get into the unspecific mm. symptoms. Some, some people have um, gustatory dysfunction. In other words, they become averse to particular smells. For some people, food. For some people, cigarettes. They just become averse to it. So these are the signs to look out for. It's not, I, I always tell people, it's not every fever that's malaria. Most times we get a fever and we run straight to the pharmacist and... No, me, I'm even guilty of that. As soon as I feel that overtaking me, the first thing that I automatically think is I probably have malaria because malaria is so prevalent here that that's the first thing that's going to come to any one of our minds. But you're right. We do need to actually take it a step further to say, come, oh, this may not be malaria. Let me actually start pulling out my options to see exactly what's wrong with me. But that being said, how many people are losing their lives to hepatitis in Nigeria every year? If 10% of the population are living with hepatitis. 20, actually. No, 20 million people okay, yeah, in yeah, 200. Yeah. Now, if about the people, the statistics are not really clear in Nigeria, but about 1% to 3% of people eventually die of hepatitis if it's not managed. And at that point, there's progressed to liver cancer, the liver dysfunction, and then the liver is destroyed in such people may need a liver transplant. All right. So now that we're looking at hepatitis awareness, we've been able to talk about the causes, we've been able to talk about life, lifestyle modifications or lifestyle habits that can trigger hepatitis, the different types. Let's actually get people to go out. So what would you say to somebody who is watching and thinking, okay, I don't know if I have hepatitis, what's the next step? And can you give us a breakdown of how the hepatitis screening goes? Okay. Um... The first step is knowing that you need vaccination against hepatitis A and hepatitis B, which you're currently vaccinated against. And the first step is talking to your doctor. When you speak to your doctor about your concerns and your lifestyle is, because it starts with lifestyle modification, and then your lifestyle modifications are told to you by your doctor, for example, buy your own clipper, Stop sharing shops with your neighbor, have protected sex, wash your food and boil correctly, and then you proceed to testing. Your doctor now tests you for the hepatitis A and hepatitis B viruses. Now, when you turn out negative, you now proceed to the next step, which is the first dose of the hepatitis B and A vac um, the A vaccine. That way, you're covered for the... And you're supposed to take for hepatitis B, you're supposed to take three doses. And so when you do that, you take the first dose of hepatitis B vaccine, and then you take the next dose one month after. You're supposed to take three doses for it to be complete for hepatitis B. Why for hepatitis C, um, for hepatitis A rather, you're supposed to take two doses. So we are going to do... Five different doses for hepatitis A, a and, and B. B, yes. Can you have them both simultaneously? Yeah, you can. Okay. Interesting. What would you say, though, are the three most prevalent viruses in Nigeria today? HIV. 
HPV mm. is human papillomavirus mm -hmm. and hepatitis. HPV is not often paid as much attention yeah. as HIV is. So can you, before we go, just shine a light on HPV in a few seconds. Now, HPV is also known as the human papillomavirus. Um, it is the one of the commonest causes of cervical cancer in women and can also cause oral cancer in people who engage in oral sex with people who are infected with the HPV virus. Wow, so HIV, HPV, and hepatitis, and all of these can be preventable if we just take the right measures right from the very beginning. Exactly. Someone around you may be contaminated. Make sure that hygiene is at the forefront of everything that you do. If 10% 10, 10 of Nigerians are living with hepatitis today, then we do have a serious problem in our, in our health sector. So stay away from it. And yeah, thank you so much. Thank sir. you for joining us. You're How welcome. can people contact you for more information if they want to find out more? You can follow me on, so on Twitter. Aproko underscore doctor. You can follow me on Instagram, Aproko underscore doctor. To enjoy more of this, our Ugonke videos when you just watch, press this button to subscribe on top of our YouTube page. You go love her.